They are questions that must run through the minds of airline passengers on occasion. How competent is the crew? Are they trained to deal with any emergency? Are they fully alert and fully focused on what they're supposed to be doing? There were some disturbing answers to those questions today in the case of Colgan Air Flight 3407, which crashed near Buffalo earlier this year, killing all 49 people on board and one person on the ground. Lisa Stark is in Washington this evening. Lisa? Well, Charlie, NTSB safety hearings got underway today on what brought down this flight and the focus squarely on the pilot's training and experience and what was going on in the cockpit as the crisis unfolded. In the minutes before the crash, when the crew should have been focused on landing, they violated FAA rules by chatting about their jobs, the first officer's stuffy nose, and the icy conditions. Captain Marvin Renslow, oh yeah, that's the most ice I've seen on the leading edges in a long time. Later, First Officer Rebecca Shaw adds, I've never seen icy conditions. I've never de-iced. I'd have, like, seen this much ice and thought, oh my gosh, we were going to crash. It turns out ice wasn't the real problem. What the crew failed to notice, the plane was losing speed fast. The NTSB has seen that over the, the years in a number of different accidents where cockpit discipline has been in question. Family members of those who died listened in as investigators said that in the cockpit, the pilot's control started to shake, a warning the plane was losing lift and about to stall. Captain Renslow increased engine power, then inexplicably pulled up the plane's nose, the opposite of what he should have done. Obviously, the, the initial reaction to the stall warning was incorrect, um, and that set the course of action for what followed. Jesus Christ, exclaimed Renslow as the plane rolled left, then right, before diving to the ground. First Officer Shaw screamed just before impact. Today, the pilots' union voiced their concern about training. 30 years ago, pilots were trained more about stalls and recovery from stalls. Investigators also revealed Captain Renslow lied on his application to Colgan Air about failing three flight tests. The airline could have accessed those earlier records, but only with Renslow's permission. Finally, fatigue. The night before the flight, First Officer Shaw flew across the country from her home in Seattle, and the captain was logging onto company computers in the middle of the night. On the day of the crash, it wasn't full rest. He did office work. She was texting. Fatigue, pilot training, incompetence, cockpit behavior. These are not new concerns, and this accident underscores that those long-standing issues may never have been adequately addressed.